Here's a second question. <laughs> what are the implications of a society that is less and less influenced by religion? So that's a very good question. Uh, I think it's very, very clear that uh, somebody can be an atheist and be a very, very moral person. Uh, and that somebody who belongs to a particular religion, uh, that's, that's no guarantee that that person is going to be a moral person and, and going to do the right thing. Uh, that said, I do worry about uh, what the, the political scientist and social we'll call him philosopher, Will Herberg, uh, described as cut flower ethics, uh, which is to say that uh, Western civilization essentially derives its uh, concept of morality from ethical monotheism, uh, the Judeo-Christian but also Islamic tradition. We forget sometimes that uh, much of Western philosophy was actually preserved uh, by, by the Muslims while the Christians were in the Dark Ages. Maimonides, for example, studied Aristotle in Arabic, not in Greek. Uh, so Islam has actually contributed quite a bit. So I'll, I'll say ethical monotheism. Uh, I, f I worry about what happens to a society that secularizes, uh, not in the first generation or second or necessarily even the third, but uh, over time, what happens when we accept relativism that, uh, and that it could lead to nihilism and that that nihilism then leads a, a void or a vacuum of meaning that is then filled by totalitarian uh, and violent extremist ideologies. Uh, so I do worry uh, that when, uh, when you know, obviously there's the, 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 the danger of, of believing in one absolute truth so much that it's exclusive of all others, and, and we have seen religious extremists throughout history. Uh, but on the other hand, I think there's the, the danger of going in the opposite direction, and it seems that at least in the West, that is the direction that things are going. Uh, and I think that... Uh, in, in a time when there are issues of, of religious extremism, that the answer is not going to come from secularism, but the answer is going to come from peaceful religion. I, I believe that, uh, I think since the beginning of the time, there's been some sort of religious faith uh, always on earth in some degree. Uh, we all call God by different names, but I believe that we all believe in the, the same God. Uh, and I believe that as individuals continue to uh, challenge their faiths, and as the internet continues to uh, be mo made more available across the world, um, it levels the playing field of knowledge. But at the same time, as much knowledge can be found online and through those various channels, uh, also uh, falsehoods can also be found. And so it, it requires an uh, internal challenge for each individual to find out what it is that they truly believe in. Uh, and I know many people ha choose to believe, and I would, you know, there was a statistic that was mentioned earlier about Pew. Um, I think Pew challenged their own assumption the following year in that poll. I read through it a little bit later, and they found out that uh, more, more Americans are either considered some very religious or somewhat religious, and that was followed up by a Gallup poll and a Rasmussen poll two years prior, and then six years before that. So I, I would challenge the ideas that Americans are becoming less religious. I think they are just becoming more inquisitive of their religions, and I also believe that more people um, are now looking for other religions other than the ones that they currently have. And I believe in Mormonism. This is something that we've done since the beginning of um, the, our founding of our faith in 1830 is we've sent out missionaries all across the world not trying to convince or take anything away from people's beliefs, but just to take what they, what you have, and add to it, and uh, ask them to come follow me in, in the in the voice. I'm sorry, uh, in the words of Christ, come follow me. Thank you. I personally uh, think that religion is a private matter and it should be a private matter. And um, um, in fact, my book that came in 2009 was a religion, not a state. But if we if we're speaking about society or uh, politics or the state in particular, I should not think that there should be a confusion between religion and state. And my book was based on um, a reformist Egyptian scholar who wrote a book in 1966 in which he um, claimed that in Islam, based on the Quran, Islam is a religion, not a state, a message, not a government. And so I do believe in separation actually between religion and state. And I think 
religion is a good thing to the society if it's a private matter, if it's not confused with politics, and, and especially in Islam, when all those who claim to be a religious state um, in, you know, impose things that are not necessarily uh, uh, present in the Quran, or you might see some of uh, some misinterpretation, and uh, they codify that in laws. Uh, there are those who are, you know, practicing it correctly, but some of them do not practice that correctly. So the fusion, you know, brings this um, problem of uh, claiming things or doing things under the pretext of religion that are not necessarily part of the faith. And so, uh, even though I'm a person of faith, I'm not, by the way, a religious leader, because it, on the website it says that religious leaders, I'm not a religious leader, I'm just a professor, but uh, I'm a person of faith, and I, and I believe that my faith should be private. And, uh, you know, we see, uh, for example, the United States is a secular, you know, uh, country, but everybody has the right to practice their, their faith privately. And uh, people go to their churches, their synagogues, their um, uh, mosques, um, but that doesn't interfere with the society directly uh, or impact the society directly one way or another by those faith and, and, and so on. So I believe uh, that a society that is not necessarily, um, you know, in, uh, influenced by religion is not necessarily a bad society. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a private matter to have that faith and to maintain the society as, uh, uh, you know, uh, separation between religion and state, or as we say, in, you know, uh, in the Christian faith, separation between religion and church, or we say in Islam, separation between religion and faith. Thank you. All right, any of you that know me, you know one of my things is um, our faith is not about a bunch of rituals, it's about relationship. Uh, so for me, one of the things that's encouraging about the fact that the statistics are going down about religious people, it means that we're not pretending anymore. We don't have people that are just associated with some religion because that's what their parents knew. That's what their grandparents knew. That's what people all around them told them they were. I appreciate that now we have a level of truth where you say, yes, I am a part of a faith or no, I'm not. And it's somewhere where you actually have explored. It's not just something that you've been told. Um, so I, as much as I do have some similar concerns about where we're headed as a culture, I also think it means in probably most faiths, um, I know my experience within my own world, people are actually a lot more educated about what they believe. Why? Because it's not just something that they've heard. It's not just something that people have told them. For them, it's, it's their life. And so while the numbers may show that we have a decline in, in religion, um, I think it actually shows that we have an increase in authenticity. It means those who call themselves Christ followers or those that call themselves whatever, actually mean what they say, which wasn't true. Um, I talk to my dad about it often. He grew up in uh, the middle of the Midwest, and you go to church because that's what you're supposed to do. My grandma would ask, did you go to church on Sunday? And that's all you ever knew about faith, is if you went to church. And I appreciate that we're not pretending that that makes you religious anymore, that doesn't make you a faith-based person anymore, that makes, that makes you someone who's associated. And so um, I actually am encouraged. Um, I also specifically since I work with youth. I appreciate that we're separating a little bit because now youth have to actually learn. They have to actually figure out what they believe. They don't just get to ride the coattails with their parents. If they're gonna be questioned in the middle of a coffee shop, they have to know. They have to be ready to stand firm in what they believe. So um, as much as that there's concerns about the morality, I'm excited about the fact that there's an increase in authentic faith. 